Du Bois were born in Pinner and in Omi Bicepital. Pinner was in North London, Omi Bicepital was hundreds of miles away in Lincolnshire. Little did they know as they were growing up what was happening to them, what was in store for them. They could never have dreamed in a million, billion years what was in store for their life, their friendship, um, an incredible adventure. It all started when I answered an advertisement in the New Musical Express in, in England for songwriters and lyricists and singers uh, wanted by Liberty Records who were forming an independent label in England. And I was in the back of Bluesology that was going nowhere. Um, and I was fed up and I thought, well, I've written two songs, maybe I can write a song. And so I answered the advertisement and got an appointment. And I went up there shaking because at that time I would never say boo to a goose. So I just believe I was actually going for an audition uh, up in London. I went into the office and Bray Williams was sitting behind the desk and said, What do you do? And I said, Well, I can sing. Um, and I can write, but I can't write lyrics. I'm terrible at lyrics. Um, and we talked for a few minutes and on the desk in front of him was a pile of lyrics uh, in brown vanilla envelopes stacks of real-to-real uh, -real tapes. It was, uh, you know, when you ask for songwriters and singers and you say, please send them, you get inundated with crap. Um, <laughs> but, Ray picked up an envelope from the middle of the pile and said, hmm, this guy lives in Lincolnshire, have a look at these. I went home, read them on the train, and thought, these are amazing. It was the years of uh, the 60s, Broken Harlem, the Beatles, uh, esoteric, and I really liked him. And I went home to my uh, parents' flat in, uh, in Midpillar and started to write songs. And it clicked straight away. I could write songs to lyrics. The visual, uh, the words, the visuals, the blend of the page suited me entirely. So eventually, I got to meet this young man who came down from Lincoln. And it was one of the greatest moments of my life because not only did we become the greatest of friends, and still are, who love each other dearly. But we wrote songs that got better and better and better. We had struggles. We went from writing our first song to the album Empty Sky, which had Skyline Pit and I, to the album John Allen. That was a huge difference in um, quality. From Empty Sky to Elton John, how did we take that leap in such a short time? But we did, and we clicked. We used to go to the cinema together, uh, we used to go and see shows, we used to go to live concerts. It was most, he was the friend I never had. I never had a best friend at school, really. So he became my best friend and my lyricist. And people had always said to me, well, you know, you're quite verbose. Why do you need to write it? Why can't you write it? I think that's one of the greatest insults to people who can write lyrics. Because if you think of all the great lyricists from um, the beginning of time since popular music began, they are something else. Now, our success story is what it is, you all know. Um, and through the years, we grew and we grew and we grew. And we, we, we climbed mountains that we never thought were possible to climb. And we scaled heights that we never thought were possible to scale. And throughout that time, we never ever really had an argument. He was disgusted with my behavior, I guess, but uh, <laughs> that's a given. But, you know, to this day, we are still growing as a partnership. We've just finished an album in Los Angeles. About three Um, and it's absolutely wonderful and it's full of youth and it's full of vitality and it, it's a wonderful place to be after we've been together for 56 years to have uh, that. He is without a doubt one of the finest lyric writers of all time. Every time I sing his songs now, and I've sung them hundreds and hundreds of times, I feel a different 
sing every time I see it. I understand what the lyric means more every time I sing the song, which is the trademark of someone who's brilliant at their job. This is just a lyric. It's the conjurer of cinema in, in, in words that I can relate to. When I sit down at the piano, I go, hmm, that's going to be like this, this is going to be like that. And for some goddamn reason, it's worked. And I am so proud tonight that, that he's being inducted into this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because if it wasn't for him, I would be sitting here talking about it. Because the lyrics come first, they always have done. Um, he's always been generous, and when I've crossed out verses, crossed out lines, um, he's just gone with the flow and he's trusted me. And that trust has spilled over into our friendship. He's the happiest man in the world with his lovely wife and his two daughters. I'm the happiest man in the world with my husband and my two sons. We have come through. We have survived the storm, and there's been a lot of tempestuous weather in our relationship, not between us, but with other things interfering. Um, but I can honestly say, this is one of the greatest things that changed my life. The thing that changed my life completely was meeting Bernie Talbot. And hopefully there will be many more songs to come. God knows how many we've written. But I honestly believe that he's one of the greatest songwriters of all time. And it's been a privilege for me to actually write with him. So I would like to uh, so, uh, is there a film now coming up? I don't know what's going on.